Hi friends, hello, happy Friday. Holy smokes, it's Friday. So I made a little bit of a mistake with the time today. I put PM instead of AM. So hopefully people are getting the notification that it's AM. I usually go live in the AM. I would not be able to make it in the PM. So anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. I see people popping in. Hi, Cherie. Hi, Sue. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Kathy. Kathy from snowy Michigan. Well, we had, we just had a little bit of snow here in Maryland. It lasted all but five minutes and now it's raining. So, you know, it's Maryland. We get weird weather. So I hope everybody's doing well this week. I don't know about you, but it has felt like the longest week ever. When it was Tuesday, I literally felt like it was Thursday. So, but I'm so glad to be here with you today. This is like the highlight of my week coming in and being able to like just share a little bit of joy. So here we are in the Craft Your Joy live, live, live YouTube, live on um, Facebook too, I think. I don't know. I never know if we're really live on Facebook. So I see some other people popping in. Elizabeth, Kathy, Wendy. Hi, everybody. Okay. We're going to jump in. I've got a really fun card project today to share. And it's, I'm going to talk a little bit about the color palette. It's totally inspired by, the whole project is inspired by a watercolor because we've been doing washi, easy going washi watercolor. And we're going to do some more of that today. And I shared a card this week in Instagram that, um, Instagram and Facebook, that was kind of a waterfall floral card. And I'm going to show that when we head to the down camera. And that was kind of my inspiration for the design of the card this week. But my inspiration came from uh, an embroidery piece I found. And I'm going to tell a little story about that. So I see everybody, see more people popping in. Wendy says she's multitasking. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. I'm always multitasking, it feels like. Okay, we're going to jump in um, and dive into the down camera here and take a peek. Okay. All right, friends, here is the inspiration for today's card. I, I shared this this week in Instagram. I also shared this um, in the launch of my new set, uh, Be Encouraged, that we're going to work with today. But this is this really fun waterfall, like floral arrangement. We're going to do something like that today, but we're going to do a little bit of a washy watercolor effect to it. So let's just, let me toss that to the side here. Let's dive in and do a real quick look at the, um, a real quick look. And I've got something on my screen I need to get rid of here. Okay, real quick look at the supplies. Hello, Christy. Hello, April. Okay, we are working with two, this is a stamp set mashup. So we're working with Be Encourage and um, Be Gentle With Yourself. Actually, no, <laughs> it's called Beautiful Moments. I'm, I'm saying be gentle with yourself as, because as you can see, I've lost the sentiment. It's somewhere in my studio space here. But here are the two stamp sets that we're going to be using today that I'm mashing up. Now, all of the supplies are listed down below in the description. Um, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you you I have to go back in and add them. It's weird over there. Um, so... The paper stock that I'm using today, I'm using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. I'm always using watercolor. Um, so I've got the cold pressed paper that I'm using. And I'm using Innocent Pink card stock. And I've cut this to an A2 size card. So I'm using that. And here's my watercolor. Here's my watercolor paper. Now I've already pre cut my base with the Master Layouts Scallop Die Love. So let's just bring it in. Here's what I here's what I think we're gonna end up making today. But you never know what's gonna happen, right? We've done a little bit of this washi watercolor over the last couple lives. We're gonna continue to do that again today and just kind of play. But my inspiration today 
Uh oh, let me open this card. My inspiration, let me pop that over there, is this. So I'm just gonna, I, okay, little fun fact. I, it's been about 23 years, 20 to 23 years. And in my 30s, which has been a little while now, in my 20s and 30s, I was really, really into embroidery. Um, hand embroidery, cross stitch, like all different kinds of embroidery. So lately, recent, recently, I was going through a bin of all of my supplies for this, and I found this piece that I created. This looks like a little bit of satin stitch and just a couple specialty stitches and some really beautiful threads. And I was so inspired by this color palette that I'm like, I pulled it out of the bin and I'm like, we're going to make a card out of it today. It's very ethereal. And it inspired this kind of ethereal floral spray. So that's the color inspiration. And um, yeah, inspired by embroidery. So here are the colors that I'm going to be working with today. Lovely Lavender, Plum Punch, Ocean Mist, Grass Green, and Fresh Asparagus. These are all from the Gina K line. I've got them all right here. We'll be bringing them in. But we're going to also do some stamp, um, some stamp layering. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those stamp layering. You all are sharing that you really like the colors. I do too. I do. You look at that little swash of gold in there. Um, looks like I cut myself. A little swash of gold in there. Love that. Okay, I've got all my stamps over here. We're going to get started. I've got a little bit of schmutz right here on my um, watercolor paper right out of the gate, right? It just came from my fingers. So I'm not going to worry about it because we're going to be stamping over it. So we're going to be mashing up the beautiful... Last month, I know I talked about when I shared this beautiful moment stamp set. I really love this flower from that stamp set because it's got that papery, feathery kind of petal look to it. We're going to mash that one up today and do some stamp layering with the hydrangeas that are in the um, Be Encouraged stamp set. So when I'm starting out with stamp layering and creating that waterfall look, I'm going to work light colors to dark colors. So I'm going to build up my colors and we're going to be doing that with these three colors, Ocean Mist, um, Plum Punch, and Lovely Lavender. So I'm going to get started first with Lovely Lavender. We're going to do this part first, then we're going to stamp all of our elements. So let's just get going. See everybody popping in. There's, wow, there's 28 of us today. That's wild. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this lovely lavender down. And it is very, very faint. That's okay. And I'm just getting that. I'm going to do a little bit of a threes. I'm going to bring this down over here. And then I'm going to pop one right over here in my lovely lavender. Okay, I've got a little bit of water. We're going to get this nice and wet. So the brush I'm using, I've got a really small brush. This is a number three Princeton Heritage brush. Now, this is a really great paper. It's very washy. You know, it's 100% cotton, so it's going to be able to take this washy kind of what I'm throwing at it right now, all this water. So I'm not, this lovely lavender is lovely, but it's not really moving that much because it's a very, very faint color. You know, it's a very soft color. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some down on my mat and then just get them nice and wet and then just start dropping that in to where I put the water. So this is wet into wet, and this is very, very faint. I'm not digging it. I need to get a little bit more, a little bit more going here. 
because it's going to fade back. So we've been doing this technique, many of you, I'm recognizing all the names, you've been here for the last couple weeks, I've been doing this very similar technique for the last couple weeks because I'm liking it so much. And today, because it was more about the inspiration of the, uh, the colors, I'm kind of loving the way this looks. So this is like super, super faint. And I think I just want a little more out here. So I'm just painting, got a little bit of hair there, a little fuzz painting with that um, lovely lavender. Let me get that out of there. Sometimes I got fuzz on my brushes and it translates over. So how's everybody doing? It's good to see everybody. I wasn't here last week. Last week, my, um, I missed everybody. Last week, my schedule was a little bit bonkers. <laughs> with deadlines. So I felt like if I came live, I was going to do a disservice to you all because I had so many plates, spinning plates in the air. So I'm just adding a little bit more of that lovely lavender right in here at the top. And I just want to let it dry. You can see that this is a pretty, pretty faint. Kind of digging that, but it's pretty super wet. Now, I need to bring in the heat tool, which I did not plug in. So let's plug that in real quick. Always forget about the heat tool. <laughs> Gloria just shared. Um, super duper cool and keen. How are you? I'm good. Hope everybody's doing good. All right, I'm going to heat set this. It's going to a little, little bit loud. Just going to give it a quick hit. And if it's still a little bit wet, that's okay. So now I'm going to come in and start to do some layering. So I did that first layer in the lovely lavender with that really beautiful paper-like flower. Now I'm going to come in with my plum punch and one of the first hydrangeas. So we're going to do a mix. There's two hydrangeas in the Be Encouraged set, a large and a, a smaller, like a large and a medium. And I'm going to take this large one and start to come in and fill in some of the flowers with the plum punch. Just kind of come in here. And that's okay. You see where it's wet? It's kind of already bleeding. Now, I know my thing's going to go there, so I'm going to put one, I'm going to pop one right up there. It's already bleeding a little bit, and that's okay. That's what we want it to do, because we're going to add a little bit more water to this and just kind of force these colors out. So the brush is wet, the paper is dry, and I'm just l touching the ink with the tip of my brush and just letting it do its thing to get these kind of this ethereal kind of look. Oh, I'm loving this. Loving it. Now, I know we've talked about this. I hope you guys have been giving this a go, giving this a try, this easy washy watercolor. Now, so we've got these layers going. You can see the first layer, and then we've got this layer on top. So we've got this, we've got this uh, dimension happening. So we've got flowers that are popping forward and flowers that are going backward. And we've done that all on one layer, right? So that nothing is like physically popped up. Look at that, oh, I love that. But we've got that illusion and that look and feel of dimension with things coming to the foreground and things moving to the background. I'm going to pop a little bit of this plum punch. No, yes, plum punch. See how I'm just grabbing what's there and I'm just kind of going to take a little bit of that and drag it out a little bit. And the more water you add, the more washy it's going to get. Oh, 
I'm loving that. I just, I want that look up there, that washy look. I love how this is bleeding out right here. And I'm just grabbing what's here and rolling with it. Now, I'm going to leave the centers of my hydrangeas here washy. You could go back in and just pick up a little bit of your color and just drop some of those colors back in. But I'm going to leave them super washy right now. I'm loving this. Okay. Don't forget you can ask questions along the way. All right, I'm going to grab the small hydrangea. And now I'm going to come in with the ocean mist. Now this color, I really, really love this color, ocean mist. It's just such a beautiful blue. It's got, it's just, we're going to be doing the, the uh, cup in this color. So we're going to see more of it but we're just going to finish up this piece first. So I'm going to take, just ink this up and I'm going to fill in and go over top and add my next layer of blues with the ocean mist. And I'm predominantly popping them out here because I know my cup's going to go here. So, and I want to be able to see that ocean mist color. You can see where it's hit the water. It's starting to move around a little bit. So we're going to move it. We're going to make it move a little bit. And this color is not as intense in, in its uh, wanting to move as um, plum punches. So I'm going to put a little bit of that down on my glass. And I'm just going to drop it in to the areas where I have popped some water and just kind of pop a little bit over here. It's so faint. It's kind of unicorn-y. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a unicorn. Um, these colors <laughs> look a little bit like unicorn colors or, you know, that kind of mystical, magical kind of thing. But I'm loving the way that plum punch and that ocean mist is just kind of mixing up together. This ocean mist in like your watercolor pan sets would be like a manganese blue. Look at how, or cobalt blue. Cobalt's actually a little bit um, darker. But look at how it's mixing in right there. Loving the way that mix is happening. So I'm getting that ethereal kind of feel that I want. And I'm going to leave this alone. So this is our background. This is our this is our patterned paper background. We're going to be layering everything on top. So with this stamp layering, and I have four other video. I have many videos on my channel here, but I have four other videos specific to pattern building with stamp layering. But today we're doing this in a little bit more of a washy kind of ethereal look. Um, I'm just going to move that. I see a little puddle there. I'm just going to move that a little bit. But we've got this illusion. When you're doing this stamp layering, you can see when you're working light to dark, you can see colors that are in the background and see colors that are in the foreground. So we already start to build that illusion of texture and dimension by layering our stamps that way. So in this card, you can see that I worked light to dark, but they all kind of, they waterfall down, but they all just kind of look like they're graphically might be on the same plane or really close. There's like two planes here, one that's in the background and one that's in the foreground. With this technique, you can see that we've got like three layers happening. We've got that, um, the larger flower in the back that's really far back. Then we have that plum punch that's really far up. And then we have the ocean mist hydrangea that is right there in the middle. So it really does give us that flowing kind of look and feel. So I just kind of nerded out there and really nerded out. So <laughs> I hope you found that useful. I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to come in. I just, I painted this 
this little flower yesterday and I just, I don't know, I just keep carrying it around. We're not even going to use it today. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I've already stamped out, stamped and die cut my the mug. But what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp out, here we go. We're going to go ahead and stamp out some of the other elements that we're going to be using. The mint. I'm going to do this in two different greens. So let's go ahead and stamp that out. I've got grass green and fresh asparagus. And we're going to be doing washi watercolor with this too. So I'm going to ink this up. Hello, Robbie from Soggy, California. I'll tell you what. California has been kind of interesting lately. You've gotten lots of rain, lots of snow. You're getting our weather. It's kind of wild. Getting all the all the seasons. So I went ahead and stamped down the mint. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp out, stamp down the shadow layer for this part of the mint in fresh asparagus. Okay. I'm just kind of stamp that down and this is a little bit darker and that's okay I'm I want it to be a little bit darker I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna get some water in here we're gonna use that fresh asparagus that's there uh, Robbie just shared it's really wild these days your weather is super wild it's been crazy Sue just shared, it's like when you mask out your images, some are in the front and some are in the foreground. Yes, exactly. You could, like I could have masked out all those images. Now I'm just taking this and just using this fresh asparagus and using the color that's here and just kind of washing this out a little bit and letting this bleed and just washing it out. Kind of letting that be just getting a little washy watercolor effect i'm liking this doing you could do this in a lighter color like you could done the base in jelly bean green and then did your um other mint in like the grass green and the colors would have been closer together but um i used the fresh asparagus and used the grass green because i wanted you to see a difference in the darks and the lights in the mint um maybe not super realistic but you know what whatever's whatever's okay i've got this little tea piece i'm going to stamp out in the plum punch and these are just i'm just starting to stamp out the elements that are going to get die cut and i am using watercolor paper so you can go in and just add a little bit of water to any of the areas that you feel like you're seeing too much of the of the paper because it's not going to be like super smooth so you can use a little bit of water to do that now I've got this sentiment sending you a little bit of encouragement this is my first time doing a sentiment in my Gina K uh, Gina K sets that's a little cheeky with encouragement. I've never done anything like that before in my line. So I thought it was kind of fun. I thought it was kind of fun to do that. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and let this, let this sit aside and dry. I'm going to die cut all these pieces. These are going to be our bits and our pieces to build our card. Now I'm going to bring this back in. And this time I took the advice, can't remember whose advice it was, but many of you have shared this with me before. Whenever I pre die cut something, it's been a little difficult to watercolor because I'm kind of moving it around. Although this is a little bit of a bigger piece. I've got a little piece of that, um, it's like a painter's tape. So I just put it on the back there. Now we're gonna do a complete wet on wet technique today. So I've got this, I stamped out the cup, that wonky little teacup in the ocean mist. And I'm going to wet the whole entire thing. So 
so it's kind of helpful that it's sitting down. Normally I would just work with it on its paper and then I would die cut it. But because we're doing this Crafter Joy live today, I pre-die cut it with the die, the coordinating die in the set. And this die has the um, the element here where you can cut out, it cuts out the center, which is kind of cool. Love that. Super, super fun. Love this. All right, getting this all super wet. And then I'm going to take the ocean mist and kind of put this down onto my mat here. Yeah. And then I'm just going to start to drop in the color. This color is going to take us some time to build up because it is so beautiful and ethereal. And I, you notice I'm not going over to the edge. I'm just kind of letting the water do its thing. I could paint it, but I'm resisting the urge and I'm just letting the water kind of do its thing. If I want to coax it, I can just kind of coax it over a little bit. I want this side to be a little lighter than this side. So I am concentrating my layers of color over here. And I'm going to dry it up. Now, while, before I do that, while this is wet, I, I want to get that ethereal look in here too, inside. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this uh, lovely lavender, get this nice and wet. And I'm just going to pop it in here just a little bit. Just a little bit. And let that kind of do its thing. Okay, now I'm going to heat. I'm just going to give this a little bit of heat. I actually really want some more lovely lavender. It's just not giving me... This is a very, very light color. So I just want to add a little bit more. There we go. You see that white that's happening right there in the paper? I'm going to leave that be. I'm digging that. I am digging that. Okay, let's clean this up so my hand doesn't get in it. Because it would, right? And I'm just going to heat set this a little bit just because I want to add some layers. So we're going to do some glazing or layering. This color is very, very light. When I dry it, it's going to dry back. Now, when you're working with watercolor paint or pan sets or tubes or whatever it is that you're working with, it's it's a little more, whoops, a little bit wet. Same thing happens. And I've shared that on this channel, on this channel before. The same thing happens. Our colors will shift they will fade back a little bit. And I'm kind of digging the way this looks. Kind of looks nice, but I really want a little more color. I want more color. Oh, I see Mary McDonald, Annie and Anne. Hello from the UK, welcome. Um, Mary just shared, this is her first time here and she is excited to watch this watercolor technique. Yay, Mary, welcome. I'm excited to see you. Okay, now it's faded back quite a bit. Brought it up so we could take a peek. And I kind of like it, but it's a little flat. So I want to add a little bit more. So we're going to do, we're going to layer in some more color. We're going to glaze. Now, when you're working with real watercolor, we're working with our dye inks today. The same thing happens. Once it dries, your color shifts back. And I was just kind of sharing that a little bit before I um, diverted off there. So I'm going to add a little bit. This is dry. My brush is wet. I'm picking up some of this ocean mist. And I'm just going to add a little bit to that top. Now it looks like a hot mess. Working rather quickly because this is dye ink. And it will dry quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and blend it out a little bit but it's starting to get a little more intense right up there. 
in that corner. And we're just going to let it bleed out. My brush is clean. If you get like those hard edges that I just had, I'm just washing over it with a clean brush. I'm going to pick up some more of that color. Drop that in. Ooh! Digging it. Digging it, digging it, digging it. Now, I feel like my lovely lavender was a bit, is getting a little bit washed out. So I'm going to do it again now that we've dried it. And I'm just taking the inks and I'm smashing, smashing them down onto my glass mat. You could do it to your mat. And I believe, I don't know, I don't think you can do it on the inside. But I guess you could. Like if you could get some of the ink on the inside, you could use this as your palette. Um, but this works too. Okay. So I've got a little bit of this lovely lavender and it's a little bit wet right here from the other bit that I've been doing here. And I'm just adding it in, dropping it in and letting those colors mix. So I get that kind of ethereal look that's happening there. I'm going to bring this up so that you can see. And I am going to dry it. So I'm liking the way this looks. It's got a washy look to it. I really feel like I want to add just a little bit more of that ocean mess. I'm going to bring this up and get a little bit of that so that you guys can see this. Everybody can see this kind of close up. Just adding a little bit of that to that corner. All right, we've got a lot of new people popping in. Oh, uh, I think it's Tressa. My first time here and new to watercolor. Oh, I love it. I'm so glad you're here. No worries. People are popping in late. Don't forget, we have the replay. All right, so these two colors, it would take me a long time, a little while, to build them up if I really wanted to get them super dark. But I don't want to get them super dark. I want it to be that kind of ethereal kind of look and feel that we've got going. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back and pull in my pieces. So we've got all of our pieces now. So this is what happened with our mint. I did that um, fresh asparagus over top of the grass green. And when we added water to it, the grass green disappears, but that's okay. I've got that look and feel of the two colors coming together and I'm digging it and I love it. We've got our sentiment cut out. The sentiment, the sentiment, this is the first time in my um, stamp sets with Gina K that we have a uh, die for the sentiment. So I think we're going to be doing that more. Gina added this before it went into production, and I love that she did it. Um, a lot of times my sentiments, look, you know, they're graphic in nature, so they look like, like whole elements. So it works perfect in this instance. Um, and I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. Oh, Kathy McConnell just shared something so sweet. I'm going to pop it up. Welcome everyone new. I've only been here for a few weeks and I've already, and I can't speak. And already these are my favorite lives. Thank you, Kathy. So sweet. Okay. Now let's go ahead in and come back to our pattern paper piece. We can see how everything is kind of bleeding together. We've got that ethereal look and feel now that it's dry bringing in that original color inspiration, you can see where I kind of got that from. It would have been, I could have pulled in like one of these greens to this and that would have been fun. But, you know, this is, the mint is where I kind of pulled the greens into. So I'm a little bit obsessed with that embroidery piece. Okay, I'm going to bring in, we're going to just start to assemble and chat our way through this. And I'm bringing in my... Um, innocent pink. Looks like I got some water on it. 
That's okay. I've got some Gina K Designs Connect glue. <laughs> you all are saying some really nice things in the comments about me and watercolor. Thank you. Yes, if you're new here, I do stamp set mashups every week, usually every week. Last week I wasn't here on my lives and I'm always um, sharing watercolor techniques or watercolor-esque techniques with mediums. We've also done like colored pencil here. We've done watercolor pencil. We've done all kinds of things like that, but I like to share those kind of mediums and get watercolor effects with them so we get this look and feel thank you sue for that very very sweet comment so i use the gina k connect glue i like to use the wet glue with the watercolor paper because it really does get a good adhesion between um, the cardstock base and the watercolor base okay now i'm going to position my uh, teacup and you can see just that little tiny bit of the plum punch in there really gave this uh, gave this that contrast it's pulling these colors that are happening here we've got that um, not plum punch lovely lavender sorry about that that lovely lavender in the background here you can see some of those blues that are in that dye are coming out and kind of a nice contrast to that ocean mist ah, I love that okay now let me go ahead and grab my foam tape and we're gonna pop that up a little bit just put a little piece of foam tape in the middle there and just kind of pop that up right here. I'm kind of sad that I'm covering that. I knew that was going to happen the second I put that there. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit so that we can see a little bit of that. So I'm using those three hydrangeas there and just kind of popping that cup between um, the middle here. <laughs> Catherine just shared a comment. Super fun. Speaking of watercolor pencils, I'm going to share her comment. I tried a small starter pack of ink tense pencils that you have mentioned, and oh boy, I love ink tents. Holy cow. They are so vivid. Thanks for the tip. You are so welcome, Catherine. I am so excited that you're loving ink tense pencils. I love them. I feel like we need to do another tutorial, friends, with ink tents. Let me know in the comments if you're feeling ink tensey. And you want to see ink tense pencils again. Um, many of you are new and you may not know what ink tents are, but yeah, it might be time to do another fun tutorial with them. So thank you, Elizabeth. That's a sweet comment. Elizabeth helps me feel not so watercolor challenged. That's the thing about watercolor. Watercolor makes people feel uncomfortable because it is, it's very flowy and it just can feel like an out of control medium because the watercolor tends to go in places that you don't put it. But remember, watercolor only goes where the water is. Um, and we're probably gonna have a little bit of time, so I'll show that. I'll show what I mean by that. Okay, I'm gonna take the mint and I'm gonna pop it up right here. I am gonna take a little bit of foam tape and um, pop that up. Kathy just said, I vote yes for ink tents. Oh, I just love ink tents. I know I've done a couple different uh, tech videos with them, but I always feel like, you know, when we're learning new things, we need to hear it more than once. Robbie just shared, yes, please. I do not know what those are. Oh, Robbie, you are in for a treat. You are in for a treat. She goes, I just got my first set of watercolors and I'm loving them. Oh, I love that, Robbie. What set of watercolors did you get? Pop it in the um, chat. Okay, I've got my little tea piece. So this is just my little tiny, like, this is the little tea bag. We don't have the physical tea bag. You just use your imagination that it's down inside the cup. And 
we've got this cute little string for the tea bag. Cheryl also said that she would like to see something with, oh, look at that, with intense. Let's make sure my glue is going. There we go. Test it. Before I go live, I always test my glues. But, um, yeah, must have got a little goopy. Oops, I put a little bit too much right there. I'm just going to spread that out a little bit over this. Put a little bit right there. You only need a little bit. And I'm just going to pop that right there. It gives us that illusion that it is my tea bag is down inside my teacup. And I'm going to let that just a little dab just to kind of hold that down. Let it do its thing so it's kind of sitting up a little bit. And then we've got that. Here, let's close this up a little bit. I'm going to bend my card a little bit because that watercolor paper is making it try to buckle a wee little bit. Let's just put our tape down here just to kind of hold that card down. And then I've got the sentiment here that's cut out. And the reason why I kind of really into these sentiments now that are cut out with dies because they, it makes it pretty easy to just integrate them into your project. So, and they become kind of like a die cut element and they're super fun. Okay. Let's see, where do I want to put this? I think I want, I don't really know where I want to put this. I think I want it to kind of nest underneath here. I don't want it to be too far over. I think I want it to nest right there so that the tip of the mint kind of touches the sending. Sending you a little encouragement. Kind of digging that. Ah, I'm loving the way this card came out. Loving it. Oh boy. Okay, I'm going to bring in, we've got a couple minutes. We have several minutes. So I'm going to bring in, we'll come back to the card, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why watercolor. Uh, Cherie just said, I love the cutout sentiments. I do too. So watercolor pan sets. Everybody's sharing that they want to uh, do a little bit more with ink tents. That's exciting. Exciting. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of this plum punch. I think we'll do something with ink tents next week. Now, watercolor. The reason why it makes people feel so nervous or feel challenged by it is because it can feel very unpredictable right but remember watercolor only wants to go will only go where the water is so see how i'm just dropping it in here and letting it go now this isn't we're using dye inks today but watch as i'm moving it around see how it doesn't it really if i want it to go beyond the water i gotta give it i gotta coax it See how I got to coax it to get it to go? So it only wants to go where the water is. I can really tap on it. I can do all kinds of things, but see how it's staying where the water is? So keep that in mind when you feel like watercolor is super challenging or you're nervous about it. That's wet into wet. So if I'm painting... Let me, my brush is wet, the paper's dry. I'm going to pick up some of this pigment and I'm painting. You can do like a really traditional like painting. You're just moving it around with water. I know that's pretty, we weren't really covering all of that today, but um, that keeps it pretty simple. Just so that you can see, watercolor only goes where the water is. See that little drip right there? Like, in order to get that drip to move, I have to give it some water to go to. 
So that, I hope that kind of explains things a little bit with watercolor. <laughs> looks like, a, Kathy just said, looks like a purple mousse. Sue just shared, I have a watercolor pan set, but haven't really used it that much at all. Would love to see more with the pan sets. Great. So I do a lot of stuff on this channel with the pan sets. Love it. If you all, I'd love to hear what kind of pan sets you all have been enjoying. Pop them into the comments. Um, as you all know, I have a ton of watercolor sets and many of you that are here that are in my watercolor wonderland class, you know how many pan sets because I've shared them in that class. You don't need all of those pan sets. I just have them because you know, this is what I do. It's what I do for a living. I teach. Okay. Let's come back and take a peek. I'd love to hear what, um, kind of pan sets you all are using. Um, <laughs> it's a moose. Catherine said that it was becoming a moose unicorn. You know what? Look at it. It kind of does look like a moose. There's the moose face, the ears, and the. <laughs> That's so funny. I think I'm going to be laughing about that all day. That's super fun. All right, let's come back in and take a look at the card. Now that it's had a little bit of time to dry, it's a little damp right there, but look at the layers that we've got going on in this card and there isn't a lot of height you know if you're new to the channel and many of you are and many of you aren't um my i like to build card designs where the stamps are the star of the show and we don't do a lot of extra things um so you can start to see that we've got a lot of texture and dimension and layers coming up from the bottom to the top and we've kept everything in this same color scheme. Love it. Um, love, love, love. Okay. Kathy just shared. I've got the mission gold pan set. Oh, Kathy love mission gold. Really super vibrant. If any of you are in my community, um, my craft your joy community, I've got, free downloads about mission gold and building a set of 12 um, watercolors in that community. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, Catherine said, I've got the Paul Rubens and they're good. I also got a student grade Van Gogh and you can really see the difference um, that I've talked about with the amount of pigment. Okay. So the Van Gogh, Oh, that's so cool that you mentioned that. Um, Catherine, I'm going to come to the front. I'm going to grab something real quick. Let's see. I'm going into my watercolor drawer and grabbing some, some of these sets that you guys are talking about since we're having a little chatty chat about watercolor. Okay. So the Mission Gold pan set, for those of you who are interested in, in, uh, pursuing mission gold, or you're interested in learning more about watercolor, you're in the right place. Okay. Because I talk about all kinds of watercolors and it sounds like everybody's more is interested in learning some more about ink tense pencils and different watercolor hand sets. And now that I know some of the things that you're using, I can kind of dive into it on this channel. I use a lot of different ones. I don't stick. I'm not like I don't stick to one brand when it comes to watercolor pan sets because I love them all for different reasons. So the Mission Gold set, if you are interested in my community at craftyourjoy.com, and if you're in my free community there, I do have a free download about the 12 Mission Gold watercolors you can get to build a complimentary set. And that's there in that free download. If you're new to the channel, I do have a online classroom called crafterjoy.com. And many of you here have been in classes there. I also have a free watercolor series on that channel um, called Art Exploration. And there's 12 lessons, about 12 different colors on that, on that in that class. But in that community, I, I mean, in the on that website, on my online classroom, I do have the craft your joy community and that's where I'm sharing a lot of information as well. And I'm working to build that community. I took my Facebook group off 
my Craft Your Joy Facebook group off of Facebook because I wasn't really sure if you all were seeing posts and I started to build my own community that you can opt in at and decide if you want to be a part of on your own. Okay, Cheryl just shared a bunch of pan sets that she has. Windsor Newton Cotman, Daniel Smith, Paul Rubens. So the Van Gogh set, Catherine, is the student grade version apparently of the Rembrandt. So this is the Rembrandt set. Um, oops, this is the Rembrandt set. I have this in a 48. The Rembrandt watercolors, I'll be honest, I don't see much of a difference between the Rembrandts and the Van Goghs. I feel like they're both really, really, really good. Um, so when you're out there looking at watercolors, you're going to see watercolors and some people will share information about how they don't like artist grade watercolors. They only work with professional. I like both and there are different reasons why, because every brand of watercolor is very different. Um, and does different things and behaves differently. And it depends on how much pigment is used in their colors, how finely ground the pigment is in their colors, what binders they use. Um, some use honey, some use different binders. So um, I hesitate to ever say, uh, don't do this, do that, because I just don't roll that way. And I know that maybe some of the information out there that you get um, is kind of like that. So it's it doesn't have to be that way. So when you see artist grade versus professional, the difference is um, the artist grade, the, the artist, no, the student, sorry, the student grade versus the professional artist lines in watercolors. The difference is the student grades tend to have more fillers and a little bit less pigment than the professional. The professional lines will have more pigment, so your colors might be more vibrant. Um, but it isn't, it's like, it isn't a one-to-one -one thing. Sometimes it's very different. Like Cotman watercolors, there are some colors that I really love, like Permanent Rose. You can't tell the difference sometimes between the Permanent Rose in the Cotman versus the permanent rose in the Windsor Newton Professional. Here's my take on all of it. You purchase the watercolor set that fits your budget. Spend more on paper. That's how I feel. Spend more on paper. You'll notice on this channel and in all of my tutorials, I'm usually using 100% cotton watercolor paper. You do not have to get the highest end paper, the Arches brand. Um, I do love it, but you, I do big paintings with that brand. If you're for our watercolor paper crafting projects, I highly recommend Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. Super, super affordable. Um, the other set that was mentioned, I think Kathy, yeah, I think it was Kathy that mentioned. Yeah, Catherine. She mentioned the, the Paul Rubens. So here's the Paul, here's one of my Paul Rubens sets. I love the Paul Rubens set. And I've shared Paul Rubens on this channel because I feel like it's one of those sets that's really affordable. It's sort of at a student student price, but it's hot, it's a little bit more on the professional side. And I think you get a lot of bang for the color for your buck for that set. Now, I love Daniel Smith. I love pretty much, I've pretty much tried almost everything that's out there. And I love them all. So, um, I hope that's kind of helpful and like demystify a few things. If you're interested in soup to nuts on watercolor, <laughs> I launched, many of you are in that class, but Watercolor Wonderland at my craftyourjoy.com website is my largest course on the entire platform. And it is everything watercolor. So if that's something you're interested in, you can head on over there. You can also, um, I'm going to give a coupon code for that class. It's, it's one of my larger classes. So it's one of my more expensive classes. And you can get $20 off that class using the code subscriber special. And I'll put that down in, I'll put a link down there in the description for you if you 
are catching this on the replay. Now let me just catch a couple of the um, okay, Catherine just shared, it takes a lot less water to activate the artist grade than the student grade paints. You're right. It takes a lot less water. So you're scrubbing your paint a little bit more with the student grade, but sometimes when you're just getting started, those kind of sets are more affordable and you can start to practice and really find your joy in watercolor. And over time, as that paint runs out, you can upgrade to professional. Um, okay, Robbie just shared for my first sets. I got two really inexpensive sets from Amazon. Yep, some of those sets on Amazon are, are great, are great. They're really great to work with and there are a lot of sets on there. Um, there's a channel here on YouTube, uh, Lindsay Wyrick from The Frugal Crafter. It's called The Frugal Crafter. She's amazing. Many of you probably already know her, but she does reviews literally, I think for every art supply that exists, including watercolor. And she's done reviews and she's done many, many reviews of watercolor sets from Amazon. So you could check her out. Um, uh, yes, um, Cheryl, I'm going to share this. She's learned also from me to try paints on different kinds of papers. They will do different things on it. And that's what I mean about spend a little bit more money on your watercolor paper, even for your paper crafting projects. And this is pretty affordable. It's 25 sheets and it's usually like 12 to $14, I think, of five by seven. And the reason why I'm saying spend a little bit more money on your paper than you would your paint and your brushes is because if you don't have to fight with your paper so much, you will feel more successful and you will get more joy out of the process. If you're working with 100% cotton paper, you'll see different results than you would if you were using a wood pulp paper like a Canson XL. And I love Canson XL and I love those um, wood pulp papers, but you'll see more, you'll, you'll see different effects using those different kinds of papers. Okay. Ah, Catherine says, Wonderland is fabulous. I can make the leaf shapes now. Cheryl said she learned so much from that class too. Good. I'm so excited. There was a comment that I caught. I want to come back to it. Let's see if I can get to it. Okay, maybe I already did get to it. Oh, Denise, hi, from Louisiana. Okay, all right. I think I got to everybody's comments. I'm trying to, next time I'm hoping to like be able to pop the comments up onto the screen. I just, it's a couple little techie things that I have to do to make that happen. Okay. I hope you enjoyed today's card. Let's take another look at it. Actually, let's just go to the down camera and take another look at it. I'm digging it. I'm loving it. Now, if you use any of these techniques and you make this card with any of the stamp sets in your stash, remember you can take this idea and make this card with any of the stamp sets in your stash. Tag me, share it in our Facebook group, or if you're sharing it in your social medias, tag me so I can come see it and give you some love. Okay. All right, friends. Now, a couple other little quick announcements. If you're interested, there's some new people here today. If you're interested at all in finding out when I go live, when new Gina K Designs products come out, when I'm sharing new classes and all the things, I would encourage you to get on my email list. I send an email once a week, sometimes twice if I've got a lot to say. Um, I send an email out and it comes right to your inbox. I'm not always 100% sure if you're seeing things in social media. I do post in social media often and I post in our Gina K Designs group, but I just wanna make sure if you're interested in getting information in your inbox, you can get on my email list. I also have that link down below in the description. The Craft Your Joy community that I talked about is linked down below in the description. And I have a brand new mini class. This year, I'm doing a mini class in my Craft Your Joy classroom, one, one a month. Last month was the hot air balloon and many of you took that. And this month is painting a moody daffodil. 
I'm going to go to the down camera so that you can see it. So in these, this is just a super fun class. In that class, it's a mini class. I'm covering lots of different watercolor techniques in the context of creating an oversized card that you are going to learn how to paint these daffodils. And we're also doing colored pencil in that class as well. That class is going to launch in the classroom the week of March 20th. It's up for pre-order right now. And these mini classes are super affordable. There are $22. So super, super affordable. Okay. All right, friends. It's been a day. We got all of this done in an hour with in two minutes. So I went over a little bit. So I hope you got some value out of this video today. I hope you learned a lot of techniques that'll take you and I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. Um, I'd love to see what you create. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, if you're watching this on the replay or you come back after the live and watch this on the replay. I hope to see you uh, next week. I will be back next week. It will be on Friday. And if you're on my email list, and many of you are, you'll get that emailed out to you probably about Wednesday or Thursday. So have a great weekend, friends, and I can't wait to see you next week. And all of my friends that are in the snowy areas right now, I hope the snow subsides soon and the sun comes out. So I'm sending you into the weekend, all of you, to craft your joy. Thanks for joining me today. Super, super grateful. Have a great weekend. Bye, friends.